Ciao everybody, welcome in our little home studio setup. Today we finally want to address our editing process just a tiny bit. Both of us selected three images each. We found very interesting and also you guys found very interesting in our videos. For example, in the recent one where we went to Trieste, Italy, where we showcased a very extreme example of editing. So yeah, we already wanted to do a little editing video and you guys as well wanted it. So here it is, let's dive into it straight ahead. <laughs> So with the first one here starting out, you can see the before and after this is a very drastic difference. When you take a look on the raw file on the left hand side right here, you might have never thought of the possibility of achieving an end result like this one right here. So what I figured out is when I'm outside or wherever I'm, I'm shooting or taking my pictures, I not only look for composition, not only look for light, I also keep in mind that I'm going to edit the picture. I only took the picture on the left hand side because I knew what I can do with it in the editing. So starting out, it's a very extreme example. First of all, I always like to crop 4x3 because I think it kind of looks better for photos. I don't know why. I enjoy the format more and the composition I can get with it. I always do a lot with the tone curve. I think not that many people are familiar with the parametric curve here. What I did with this photo is uh, quite extreme. I completely pushed the highlights. They don't do that much here, but here you can see some details pop out. The details that are missing because the light wasn't there at this day. It was very cloudy, it was rainy, it was windy. Usually I don't push sliders in Lightroom especially this hard because the photo can get destroyed very quickly. But in this example here, um, I did this. I never edit looking at the numbers. But here I somehow ended up with plus 100 and at the highlights and the lights. And then I counterbalanced it kind of with the shadows and the darks right here to get get the contrast popping and get the details out. Of course, my photo was way warmer. I'm trying to get there. It is, it, it's been quite a time. Uh, it's been quite a while since I've edited the picture originally. So I'm trying to remember what I did here. Getting close here. I think I boosted the vibrance quite a bit here as well. So what else did I do? I think one thing, one slider many people forget is under the color mixer, the luminance slider. So as you can see, this image has a lot of yellows, a little bit of orange. I try to make the colors pop with the luminance slider. So I drag it up here and also introduce a little bit of saturation. Uh, also, let's check out the oranges. You can make such a dull photo pop very nicely with the luminance slider. So I try to get to my original edit here. Yeah, I also shifted the blues a little bit, maybe something like this, but I'm not quite there yet. But I just wanted to show you that the luminance sliders alone make a drastic difference to the to the overall image. And of course, in this example, the parametric tone curve has a big impact on the overall image. I wanted to show you this image because I think it perfectly points out that lame or like dull looking scenes can very much come to life in your editing process. Yeah, you might argue it's manipulated, it's not how it was, but it's how I saw the image play out in front of me and all I did with editing is to enhance or like to bring the image alive I had in my head when shooting it. Hello and welcome to my editing session. I want to start with this picture of this seagull. Maybe it looks like I just cut out a bird and put it onto a blank piece of layer, but no. This is actually that before and I just burned out the sky. Before I do anything with the sliders or the curves, I crop the picture and I also crop it four by three. So for the color edit, I once created a basic preset. 
like this black and white look here and I will just put it onto the picture and explain or show you what I kind of did. I like to move the contrast slider towards the left side because I think that this is giving the picture a more washed out look. For every picture I like to move my exposure between 0.10 and 0.20. What I like with my black and white photos is to move the clarity slider into the haze slider to the left one. I can show you the difference when you increase the clarity. It will look more like a HDR kind of look and very, very much contrasty. And I like to decrease the contrast even more and make it like with softer edges. Because it's a black and white picture, I have no settings here in the calibration, color grading. So, and let's try now to get this result. It's pretty simple. <laughs> no, they would be, this would burn out the feathers of the bird too much. So I move the whites not too much to the right side. How I check my sky is that I go into this mode here. And what I want to achieve is that the whole sky is white. And I am just trying around until I get as close as possible to the result without using masks. Masks are always the last option for me. I also want to make sure that I don't lose the contrast of the feathers of the bird. And when I check now, it's kind of the result I want to get. So I will go into the masks and first try to select the sky. And then just push up the exposure. And here is the before and after of the original one, just that you can see the difference, what I did with the sky and what I did with the bird. I personally really like this kind of fine art, artistic, simple black and white pictures, because you don't lose the focus. There is no house pulling your focus away from the bird. It's just a bird flying in the burnt out sky. <laughs> All right, coming to the second image I chose. Uh, it was uh, highly requested from our Trieste video. Yeah, it's an image of uh, like these small little fishies swimming in the water. I actually thought nothing of it when I took the photo, but when I started to experiment with it in Lightroom, I was quite surprised what I could pull out of the raw file. I want to show you again the before and after. It's uh, quite hilarious, I think. Um, especially if you think about what I did here with the crop. So I'm gonna quickly duplicate the photo again and completely reset it. So <laughs> I think this is a very nice extreme example of again what's what's possible here. It's been three weeks since I've edited it so let's see if I can uh, achieve the exact same result. Okay I will try to crop this right here. Um, again I love I love the 4x3 crop and yeah let's just see what's possible here. I'm going to try to hit the tone curve right here. What I love to do is to bring the highlights down a bit because it creates a very nice fall off. In this image, not that much, but I almost always bring the highlights down in the tone curve and bring the lights up. I will do a hundred right here. Okay, let's see, this is nice. I brought the highlights up, also brought the whites up. And here you can see here's happening a lot. And then maybe bring the blacks down just a bit. All right, let's take a look. Let's take a look at the colors here. It seems like I was getting this look out of it by just grabbing the aqua color right here and decreasing the satura saturation and also boosting again the luminance a bit. And here we are. This is basically almost exactly the look I originally got out of the image. Of course you could have gone completely different directions with it. Small changes. I only adjusted here the aqua. So to sum up, I started out with the tone curve. You can see the contrasts the fall off of the lights here. Then I went back up to the basic adjustments and did a bit of uh, pushing and pulling here with the shadows and blacks. Of course you could go on a complete different way again here. You could go like complete crazy, but that's not... I just want to enhance the given image. Also no masks used, 
completely mask free because we got a nice like uh, shadow here and nice highlights. That's basically it. And then most of it was the aqua slider here. I still think it's pretty, pretty crazy here what's possible with the raw editing. For the second picture, I chose one of the pictures I also showed you in the Trieste video. It's this other picture of the seagull or of another seagull <laughs> and you can see a reflection of the houses here in the water and this perfect light situation like everything is here in shadow and the bird is sitting perfectly in this beam of light here is the picture before the retouching and i can show you the before and after here i went for a very distinct and eye-catching black and white look that you are fully focused onto the bird same as with the previous picture i applied the black and white preset and then it's not much work left just do the cropping with this picture I like this very simple cropping because I wanted the bird to be in the middle then I just played around with the highlights and whites and the blacks and then I went into masking created a linear gradient pulled down the exposure because I want nothing to be in the bottom of the picture then I put on another linear gradient from the top that this reflection is not much of a distraction but I still wanted it to be there because it looks artsy and that's kind of it. If you want you can also try to remove this stuff with masking but then the picture would look would get a different look and I will leave it there and that's the look for the second one. My final and last image would be this nice gentleman here uh, I photographed in Ljubljana. So for black and white edits, I, again, <laughs> I am always cropping 4x3. I just love the format. I highly suggest playing around with the cropping because like cropping an image, it can make such a big difference. Like I could crop like this, for example, uh, if you have enough uh, resolution to work with and completely change the look of the image compared to when I crop wide, like this, for example. Of course, with black and white, it's always nice to have some highlights, some contrast. So what can I do? Uh, I, as always, I start out with the tone curve, um, as you can see. Well, with the highlights right here, you can make them very, yeah, bring them in towards the gray a bit, make them a bit smoother. I always like to do that a little bit and then make the photo even pop more, especially with black and white, like bringing the lights up here. Um, another thing to increase the contrast, I like very contrasty black and whites. I bring down the darks and shadows a bit so you get a very nice strong contrast if you like it. If not, you can counterbalance for example with the contrast up here again or just bring the, bring the shadows a bit up to, so you have some yeah something in the blacks to work with, some detail here. And the last thing I would do is to bring a little bit of a look into it. I sometimes play with the highlights in the color grading tab. I'm bringing a bit of like orange red into it, just a tiny bit to bring some, yeah, a little bit of warmness in there. It's still black and white, but I think you can define a very nice individual style or like final look to your image and with the uh, sharpening when you hold down option or alt and drag the masking slider here you can uh, get a preview of what you're doing this counts for many sliders in lightroom just hold down option or alt i'll bring the mask almost in every of my photos to 100 you can see the difference here when the sharpening uh, when the masking of the sharpening is off can get this very weird looking artifacts especially in Lightroom sadly and I will just bring the sharpening up to 100 and it's gone and you have uh, the sharpening on the areas selected here so yeah that's the before and after basically that's the look I went for I think it's a very nice black and white edit you can do so much with black and white mm -hmm. For the third and last picture, I chose this beautiful picture of a sunset in Ljubljana. It kind of reminds me of a volcano eruption. It was amazing. When the sun set, it looked like the sky behind the mountains was burning. And how did I achieve this look? Because this is the before and this is the after. 
same as with the black and white pictures, I <laughs> created a preset called, uh, I named it Film Look because it reminds me of some kind of Kodak film. I made sure to make it more rosé-like because I didn't like the greenish touch in the picture. And for that I adjusted the blue tones and also the red and yellow tones to make it look like more soft, rosy. And for me the look is still too greenish, so I will adjust the tint just a bit. I go with around 10, that's good. And then what is left is just the cropping and the mask. So with cropping, four by three, simple. And then the masks. I first work with linear gradients coming from the bottom and try to pull down the shadow and see what's happening. Let me see what, yeah, that's good. And then a second linear mask, sorry, linear gradient coming from the top, pushing the exposure. Almost done. Then I make a pretty ugly brush stroke <laughs> to bring back the highlights of the sunset. Just adjust the whites and highlights, pull down the blacks a bit and make sure that it looks like a fire burning in the distance. So this is now my finished edit. It's very close to the original one. And to tell you something about how I come up with editing ideas, I just don't. <laughs> I usually take the picture. I just have in my head if I want it to be black and white or in color. Then I import it into Lightroom and start playing around and everything else is just poor intuition. Do I like black and white more or does a colored edit work better? Thank you so much for watching me edit these pictures. And in addition to the editing process, I always try around with different sliders and different styles and then I find out in the process what I like and what feels good for me. And that's it from my side. Thank you. So yeah, these were the insights and our philosophies to our editing, to our editing process. Unfortunately, it's not possible to show everything in a short YouTube video. We will save that for some time in the future. We really hope you could take away at least one thing or like one little tip or advice for yourself and can apply it in your own editing process or your own photography process. Thank you so much for watching. At this point we we have probably already reached the 200 subscribers which, which is very crazy to us because like Two weeks ago we talked about reaching 50 subscribers would be very nice and now we are here at 200 and we are very thankful for everyone who, who has joined us. We want to continue to provide value, to provide peaceful photography trips and let's see what's, what's going to come next. So we are open for everything. This being said, we really appreciate every single one of you and yeah, let's see you in the next one. Ciao. <laughs>